Hi. Two things popped up in my social media feeds recently that got me really concerned. The first was a question about how to connect a MIDI controller that only has a USB connection to a Groovebox or synth that has either a USB or MIDI input. And the problem there wasn't the question, of course, but the many responses that said that you should buy a USB to MIDI interface cable, which is the wrong answer. The second thing that got me worried was this comment regarding the Digitact not having velocity sensitive pads. Now, while I can't replace your Digitact pads with velocity sensitive ones, connecting a MIDI controller like this one or this one will give you the same result and you get to keep your ball. I'll show you how in a bit. And the third bonus problem we're gonna solve in this video is how to always get plugging a USB plug into its socket right the first time and not the third time like most of us do. Let's start with the basics. If your MIDI keyboard has the good old five pin MIDI out and your synth has either five pin MIDI in or an eight millimeter TRS to MIDI adapter like this one, you're all set. All you need is a regular five pin MIDI cable to connect the two. It doesn't even matter which edge you use, they both look and work the same. As long as you connect out to in, everything should be okay. On the other hand, USB works differently than MIDI cables. USB can both send and receive MIDI information on a single cable, which is great, but with some exceptions that are irrelevant to us now, one side needs to be connected to a host and the other side must always be connected to a device. The side connected to a host typically looks like this, and the side connected to a device looks like any one of these. The problem with connecting all of these over their USB connections is that they are all devices, not hosts. A USB MIDI host like this one, a Raspberry Pi, or a computer can handle and route traffic between multiple MIDI devices, but a USB device, not a host, can only be connected to a single host. By the way, some devices like this one can act both as a USB host and as a USB device. So the problem with USB and MIDI over USB that necessitates a host on one end and a device on the other is that in the example of all these four, the circuit, the keyboard, Digitact, and this controller, all of these can only act as MIDI devices and not hosts. Since all of these are set up as USB MIDI devices, we can't connect them to each other using one USB cable. Which, by the way, is a shame for USB over MIDI because, for example, Circuit and Digitact can speak with each other over the good old 5-pin MIDI both in and out directly. To speak to each other over USB, they've got to go through a computer or through a USB MIDI host. Now, unfortunately, to add to the confusion, a USB MIDI host and a USB MIDI interface cable look very similar. They both have a MIDI in and MIDI out, right? And they both have these sort of similar USB connectors. And it's really tempting to get these because they're pretty simple. They're around 10 bucks on Amazon and eBay but they're designed for an entirely different purpose. This cable is designed to hook up to your computer or Raspberry Pi, say, on one end and to a synth on the other end, whereas a USB MIDI host is designed to get these guys talking without a computer. So let's talk about these two options and then talk about a wireless option. I'll start with the USB MIDI host option. I'll clear circuit out of the way. So if you don't want a computer involved, you need a standalone USB MIDI host, which is basically a little computer that knows how to route MIDI from one device to another. The cheapest one that I found is this one from Hobbytronics in the UK. They've actually improved the design a bit since I bought this and added an enclosure. It still costs about the same, about 40 pounds or around $55. A USB MIDI host needs to be powered, and it also needs to be able to carry enough juice to power your USB powered devices, which isn't always the case, by the way. These are typically powered with a mini or micro USB. I prefer ones that have mini USB because this is more reliable and durable, and you hook this up to your phone charger, connect it in, into the USB MIDI host, and you're powered and good to go. Once it's powered, it acts as a USB MIDI host, right? A host that connects to multiple devices. In the case of this USB MIDI host, it accepts one device via USB and either one or two more through MIDI in and MIDI out. This Raspberry Pi, for example, can connect to up to four 
different USB MIDI interfaces or USB powered devices. By the way, here's a little trick to getting this in right the first time and not the third time like I did for a while. Unless the company that made your USB host or computer is evil, the side of the cable with the USB logo and these two see-through holes always goes on top. The side with these opaque or flush holes and this little seam that you can see here always goes on the bottom and sometimes you'll find the company's logo on this side as well. So remember, top side USB logo and see-through holes, bottom side seam, flush holes and perhaps a company logo. Okay, that's great, but which side here is the top? Well, you'll notice this little tongue here. If the tongue or T is on top, you know that the top is facing up, which makes sense because this is the device and Raspberry Pi aren't evil. So armed with the knowledge that the tongue is on top and the logo is on top, you should be able to plug this in every time successfully. The company that made this is seriously trying to mess with us, but armed with the knowledge that we now have, we know that even though there isn't a USB logo here, there are these two see-through holes. So we know that this is the top side for this USB hub. And here you can see the tongues. And if we put them on top, we know that this is the top side. So on this keyboard, which doesn't have MIDI out, doesn't have any power, right? So the only option to both power and get data back and forth is with this USB cable. We plug that in here and then look for the logo, look for the tongue, hook them up and boom, we have power and we're connected to one side. To connect the Digitact, we go from MIDI out over here all the way into MIDI in here. And hopefully we're in business. By the way, if we transpose this down, then on the Digitact, you can use this note range to play the different tracks. And this is velocity sensitive. So this is the USB MIDI host from Hobbytronics. You could also use a Raspberry Pi as a USB MIDI host. And you'll notice this doesn't have standard five pin MIDI outputs. This is where you can use a regular MIDI to USB interface cable to uh, connect to uh, old synths or to connect through five pin MIDI. The disadvantage of a Raspberry Pi is that it requires some basic Linux scripting. It doesn't take too long, but it is slightly more complex than um, using a standalone device like this. A higher end non-computer based option is the Boombox from Boom. This is on the more expensive side, but the advantage that this has is that it also lets you manipulate MIDI data as it's passed through it with anything from simple transpositions to complex conditional manipulations. And this also works over Wi-Fi and Ethernet. I'll link to a few more hardware only options in the description below. So those are all a few standalone options, but if you have a computer nearby, you can use it as a USB MIDI host. So let's say for example, if I wanted to connect this to the Digitact and play with these pads, I could do that with a computer. The Digitact is already connected to my computer and it's passing audio and MIDI over USB and over bridge. And I'll use another USB cable that's connected my computer to connect the machine micro to my computer as well. And I won't use the machine software, I'll just use this in MIDI mode. So now this is sending and receiving MIDI to the computer and this is doing that as well, but they're clearly not talking to each other. So your DAW may be able to link them to one another. For example, in Ableton, this is how you get it done. There are a few DAWless options as well. One option for the Mac is software called Patch Bay, which lets you easily route MIDI information from one USB device to the other, including some manipulations along the way. So the way you hook them up is you click Add Patch, and then you choose the device you want to receive information from. In this case, it's the Machine Micro MK3. Choose the device I want to send MIDI to. In this case, it's the Digitect, and Boom, we're good to go. Now, as you may recall, if we transpose this down, we can play all the different tracks on the Digitect and not just one. 
But there's no MIDI transpose button here and there's no software to configure this, at least not yet. But the patch base software has a few basic MIDI manipulation options and one of them is to transpose the notes. Luckily, it goes all the way down three octaves. And now each pad plays a different sound and their velocity sensitive as well. And that's about the extent of my finger drumming skills. Okay, finally, I wanted to show you one more third cool option, which is wireless MIDI over Bluetooth. So what I have here is the X key air. It's a wireless Bluetooth keyboard. Now if Digitect had Bluetooth, perhaps they could have spoken with each other directly, but it doesn't. However, there's a workaround for that. There's this little gadget from Yamaha that converts plain old five pin MIDI to Bluetooth. One side connects to the MIDI out of your synth and is also powered by it. And another side connects to the MIDI in. So if I plug this in here, now, even though the Digitact is now potentially Bluetooth MIDI enabled, they still won't speak to each other directly. They sort of need like a USB MIDI host only for wireless Bluetooth. Now you can use an iPhone for this, or I'll use an iPad in this case, just because it's a bigger screen. There's a software called MIDI Mitter, which lets you identify and connect these two devices to your iPad. And then once they're connected, I use MIDI flow to create a connection between the X key air and the Yamaha Bluetooth adapter. And I now have MIDI control of the Digitect wirelessly. So if you like this style of tips and tricks, you might want to check out my ever expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips and tricks available to anyone who supports this channel on Patreon. And if you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you click the notification bell after you hit subscribe. Please like this video if it was useful, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.